Now, how do we know so much about signals and how the cells react? Well, we can study it in our own human cells, and but it's a bit difficult because, you know, as being multicellular organisms, the cells take on specific roles, you know, and in that role within the tissue, within the, the organs, certain things can be done, certain things can't be done. You have the complete list of all genes within that cell. But because it's a cardiac cell in my heart, it can only choose genes from column A. Columns B, C, D are genes it can't use. So trying to study signaling responses in a cardiac cell means we're going to be limited to only what's in column A and we can't study in the pathways that may interact with genes or outcomes in B, C, D. You take an epithelial cell, columnar epithelial cell from your large intestine. Well, it can take from genes from columns B and C, but A and D are no-go. So again, you run into the same problem. You're limited. Well, to sit there and get a better indication of what goes on and how all columns can be chosen from, instead of choosing cells from a multicellular organism, we're going to choose a, a unicellular, a single cell organism, yeast. It's eukaryotic, thus it has a lot of the same organelles that we do. Um, it may have a couple of different ones, you know, it's vacuoles maybe, you know, vesicles are different, it has a vacuole, things like that that we have to take, it may have to take into consideration, but overall, it's a eukaryotic cell. You know, so we can study it and we can study the mechanisms in there. Now, granted, it's not going to be, you know, apples to apples, you know, but it's going to be, you know, close enough that we can see what happens in yeast and then try to draw, you know, a correlation to what we've found so far in human cells. What we found so far in yeast is that one of the big signaling pathways that has been very well studied has to do with yeast mating. Now, when it comes to these unicellular organisms like yeast, mating is a bit different than what we see with us multicellular, okay? There's no intercourse, there's no sex. Mating here basically means two cells fuse together, fuse their nuclei together, mix the DNA chromosomes together, and then divide. Two new genetically unique cells that are still of the same species will result. Well, the thing is, you have to have, you can't have the same type of cell or the same, you know, lineage of cells mating together over and over and over because it's a lot of waste of energy to do it, a lot of waste of resources, and it's not giving them any new genetic, re, you know, combinations. So over millions and millions of years, yeast have evolved to have two types. Two mating types, A and alpha is what they call them. A releases what is referred to as a mating factor, an A mating factor. Alpha releases an alpha mating factor. Two A's in close proximity are not going to recognize each other. Two alphas are not going to respond to each other. But an, if an A and an alpha are in close proximity and alpha is releasing alpha factor which is going and interacting and on the a and a is releasing a factor which is going and reacting with receptors on alpha what we find is the cells will then try to fuse together they will fuse together mix chromosomes recombine and then split so you now have a new alpha a new a that has a little something that they didn't have before. You know, same genes, but just different versions of those genes will now be present. Mating. We find the same, we find something similar, but not quite, in prokaryotes, bacteria. Bacteria uh, release quite a few things as waste products. 
they also, as they're going through their normal metabolic functions, will release certain small peptide fragments, small molecules into their environment. One bacterial cell releasing these small peptide fragments, these small molecules, is only going to be able to release so much. It's going to be extremely low concentration. Nothing happens. That one, thanks to binary fission, one becomes two, four, eight, come back a day or so later, you now have hundreds of millions. Hundreds of millions that are all releasing the same peptide fragments, the same molecules into their environment. And that threshold went from extremely low to extremely high, which will then trigger those bacteria to respond to those ever increasing levels of peptide fragments and those signaling molecules. They refer to this as quorum sensing. So the bacteria aren't inner aren't reacting to each other specifically they're reacting to these quorum molecules these peptide fragments these molecules that have been released into the environment as that threshold increases receptors when on the bacterial cells will bind causing signaling cascades signaling pathways and new genes will be expressed 